In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Google's Engine JavaScript Code Editor. Uh, first of all, let's go to the Google's Engine homepage. And once you're here, click uh, Platform and click Code Editor. There's also another tab, very important documentation. So these two will be the one that we'll be using uh, most uh, uh, often uh, during the uh, this course. So you can just click and also click right click this one so i'm gonna keep both of them uh, on my screen so that i can uh, uh, do them uh, side by side so let me move this one to the right uh, the code to the right and this one to the left and we can look at in here so i'm i'm going just going to show you how to get started uh, javascript uh, is not uh, the focus of our um uh, tutorials so but i think it's very important to know some uh, basics uh, of the javascript and uh, because later when you get into um some issues or if you have any questions uh, you can always come back to here look at the documentation um, if you want to learn google's engine very well um, the best way to get started is to go through the documentation reach through and all the documentation are written uh, using javascript so but there are very little difference between JavaScript and um, uh, Python uh, in terms of the Earth Engine API. So if you can read the JavaScript API, you can actually convert them to uh, Python or Jupyter Notebook. I, later, I'm also going to show you uh, the GMAP package that can be used to automatically convert JavaScript to uh, Python. But I think it's important for us to get started well, with some basic JavaScript. And so you get to know the interface and later you can also always do some testing uh, using JavaScript, okay? So first um, you can go to the uh, documentation and then click get started. From here, you should be able to see uh, the documentation. Uh, yeah, let me just maximize first. And if you scroll down here, this is a very comprehensive list of our documentation. And I highly recommend that if you have a time, um, just go through one by one and read them carefully and practice. And if you can finish all of those, you will become a master of uh, Google's engine. So uh, it's constant, constantly updating. Uh, even uh, for myself, uh, I used to just read through, but um, it would be good to just actually go over again a couple of times. And then, uh, so you can remember exactly when you need some information, you, you know where to look for. So uh, it's always important to know what's out there. Uh, rather than having to like start from everything from uh, scratch okay so uh, i'm just going in this video i'm we are just going to use the javascript uh, quick start but um later we'll introduce more but for today we're just going to go through this one so that you have the basics to get started and then you can read through the documentation uh, you can practice by yourself okay so uh, to get started if you look through the documentation uh, we're going to use the javascript code editor the nice thing about Google's engine is that if you use the JavaScript core editor, you don't have to install anything on your computer. So all you need is just a browser. You can do that using your um, tablet, your i i iPhone, or even uh, your, your your iPad. But uh, you can also use a uh, Python. Uh, but that one you you need to install something on your computer. But you can also use Google Code, but um, we we'll introduce later in this course uh, for now we're just going to go through the javascript uh, code editor so this is the interface of the code editor uh, let me maximize right and uh, it's r relatively simple and straightforward uh, there are multiple panels here on the map uh, on the interface so the bottom one here is the map so this is where you're going to visualize your data set you can see all kind of results uh, the, the geospatial data set uh, set that imagery uh, you can load them and visualize them here uh, you can also switch to uh, satellite view uh, if you want right left and right you can also for example draw all kind of rectangles or uh, polygons or point on the map uh, we're going to show you uh, later but for now uh, let's also uh, introduce some, uh, above here some of the the things that's very important to get used to on the left side here is the script uh, tabs so this is basically where you can save all your script uh, to your account otherwise after you if you don't save the script 
once you close, uh, everything is gone. So uh, you want to make sure that you don't lose important uh, stuff of your work. So the next one here is documentation. So this is also the one that you're going to use very often because um, there are lots of functions. I think there's, um, if I remember correctly, it's uh, around 1,700 functions. So it's a lot of functions. You're not going to remember everything. So uh, you need to be able to find out like when you need help, where can I find help, okay? So uh, all, all you need to do, you can come back to here if you know exactly what kind of things you're looking for. If you don't know, uh, you can just use the filter to source. For example, I want uh, random forest, right? Uh, random forest. Uh, classifier so you can see okay uh, there are two in here uh, usually the red color is the one that's uh, being deprecated so you don't want to use this one you want to use the the, uh, the black one but you can also just go through by one by one for example if you want to find out what kind of functions uh, Earth engine image has uh, you can come back to here you can you can look through and once you click individual one uh, you, you're going to pop up the uh, uh, more documentation so we can see the detail what kind of information you need to provide um anyway we want to introduce more uh, later but for now i'm uh, just going to show you this is uh the documentation tab that you can look for uh information about each individual function so google's engine actually i mean it's simple and easy to use uh you just call the function and then just chain the function together as a series of uh, 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 actions and then you can do all kind of a uh, geospatial analysis the last tab here is uh, assets so this is the one that where you can save data to your account and each individual account has uh, 250 gigabytes so as you can see from here i haven't used any of those yet but uh, later you can upload data sets to your account you can also um you can also save the computational result to your account okay so i'm going to show you later but for now uh, this uh, all for the on the left side the one in the center here this is where you do most most of the time you're using uh, is to write source code so uh, it's very important and you can also click that get link so let me just have a the simple this one uh, okay classic uh, example uh, print and then uh, you can double quote or single quotes and then hello oh, hello word okay at the end, uh, because it's JavaScript, you can always book the uh, semicolon, and then all you need to do, all you need to do is just uh, control enter. Once you hit control enter, it's going to execute uh, this uh, script, and then on the right here, uh, it's going to the console going to show you the output. So you can see here, uh, hello world, right? Exclamation. Uh, this is the console. It is basically the output. All the TXT. You can also print out a uh, uh, chart or graph. Uh, we're going to, just going to show you later but for now uh, you will see here as simple it, as it is and json also, also some kind of formatted right uh, so this is uh, just the simplest one that we can do using the uh, uh, call editor if you see a star here that means the script is not saved yet so if i'm trying to close probably you ask you changes you made may not be saved do you want to leave or cancel if i cancel I come back now i can actually save the documentation uh, the, uh, the script so all i can do uh, i can just click save it will pop up uh, the title so i can just save this one to my account right so uh, for this one you want to choose a name so i can just say hello what you don't have to put any extension uh, you can just put the name in here but i i would recommend that you put .js uh, the reason for this is that uh, you can actually clone the uh, the repo uh, onto your computer. So if you don't have any extension, uh, the computer might not be able to recognize. Especially if you want to push the script into uh, uh, a GitHub, um, then it's better to have a, 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 a an extension so that uh, GitHub can also recognize that. So uh, usually I'll just put the extension .js and uh, represent JavaScript. Okay. You don't have to put any uh, community images um, just hit ok then it should be saved to your account on the left side here and then you can click you will see here now i have hello world.js right i also have some others but uh, this is the one right once it's saved uh, it's on here you can double click i can also click the other scripts right uh, it's by default it's going to open uh, on the uh, the uh, 
co-editor once you have this one uh, there are a couple ways you can uh, save the, the script uh, you can you can share the script with others so by just uh, click the get link right so for now if you look at the URL here uh, it doesn't change it but if you click get link now you can see this one by right? this is the link like unique URL you can share with anyone uh, as long as they have on a uh, uh, engine account uh, then they can open if they don't have one they won't be able to open also you can also see that one from uh, from the browser the uh, address bar here it's also being updated and you can also have two uh, checkboxes in, uh, uh, in here disable auto run and also high uh, call pen this is depends on what you need if your script is going to run uh, uh, for, takes a long time to run you want to disable this one so that uh, it's not when the user click the link it's not being executed okay but most of the time if the script is just very simple you can dip this one as default and then so i just it, keep it in mind it's just a snapshot okay so every time you update um you need to click the share again to get link otherwise it will be just a snapshot of what you share right now when you click the link so i then can copy assume that you already send this link to someone else and then someone can just click the link or they can paste the url using the browser and then just hit enter they should be able to see exactly uh what you uh share with them so this is how you can actually share the script this one actually is very transformative right because uh it just uh, empower reproducible and uh, replicable research uh, in the past if you like read that uh, peer-reviewed uh, journal uh, publications sometimes you see the authors like uh, uh, all kind of stuff but if they don't share the source code even if they share the source code it might take a while to actually create the environment to reproduce uh, what other people did and google's engine just totally changed the um the 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 the, the way that how we share uh, uh research user share your script and if you if your algorithm your, your design everything works fine then other people just click the link they will be able to get exactly the same results so it makes all kind of geospatial research basically reproducible and this is one step forward uh, towards um like reproducible research okay so get link by the way you can so if someone share a, a script with you you can also make changes and then you can save this one to your computer so you can also save as or you can just click save once you click save right now because uh, the, i clicked the share link earlier it will ask you to save the new file so you can just change the name and then .js uh, whatever name you want to use um, you can also manually click one um, you will just run the script okay and you can also set reset or clear script right if i if i clear everything uh, it will just become a new script so uh, pretty simple and straightforward there's another one here app this is called uh, earth engine app uh, we, you can design this um, uh, to create a new app so you can share your result with someone without on earth engine account so basically you can share with the general public and they don't need to see the source code they just need to see the final output so um we will probably introduce that later at uh, least one later but for now i'm just going to skip this uh, here and next uh you can see some of this in here the check uh the uh, boxes underline call suggestions uh you probably want you want this to be turned on uh, because uh, you will make your uh, coding experiences uh, much uh, better on the right here we have inspector uh, and console and task inspector is when we have some data we can just click the here to get the pixel values or uh, polygons or, or, or others but um, i'm going to show you examples later right. and then console is where you print uh, all the outputs task is when you have something export uh, data exported to your google drive uh, google drive uh, it's going to show in here so those are basically tasks you need to create uh, individually in order to get the data out from google's engine to your computer or to uh, google drive okay so that's all for this and uh, next i'm going to show you some of the things that you also want to be familiar uh, that's uh, the uh, keyboard uh, shortcut and if you click the help documentation uh, the, the help uh, question mark uh, you can also like click the user guide so this will take you to the documentation uh, it's the same one that uh, i showed you earlier 
And what I'm going to show you here is this one, uh, general shortcuts. So there are a couple of shortcuts that you want to use. Uh, one of the that they want very uh, useful is the control space. Uh, so it will be this one. Uh, show call suggestion and also control S. Uh, I think there's another one. What else? Control uh, enter. Control enter to execute the source call. Is it somewhere here? Control enter. Beep. You take a look okay here run script control enter um so these are just a couple ones that i will keep reminding you when i'm doing uh coding but i want you to know where you want to look for the uh shortcuts if you need it so there's com a complete uh, list okay so once we uh, are familiar with the interface then we can start doing some uh, coding and to get familiar uh, with google's engine so on the right i'm going to push this one to uh, to the right of my screen, put this one to the left, oh. and I'm going to click here, get started. So I'm going to just go through the examples here just to show you how to use uh, this. And before we get into the details, um, I'm also going to mention quickly the data structure. This is very important because they are somehow they similar to what we used to. Uh, do in traditional GIS and remote sensing basically raster data and vector data so those are the two primary data types but in the earth engine data structure they don't exactly use like raster uh, so it's something uh, similar but it's slightly different so you want to be familiar with all the concepts and so that later when you learn this by yourself you understand what is um, Google Earth Engine uh, talking about okay so there are two fundamental uh, data structures in uh, Earth engine so image and feature uh, image basically is just a raster feature you can think about just a, a, a polygon so when for example in uh, traditional GS when you use uh, uh, vector data they say the most common one probably is the uh, sweat file right by uh, Esri so the file format uh, is basically a vector data but it's composed a sweat file can compose multiple they say polygons, right? So each polygon within the thread file is basically a feature. And if you if you have a number of features together, it becomes a feature collection. So a feature collection, uh, basically, you can think 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 about the feature collection as a thread file. But um, very important that the differences between feature collection and thread file is that feature collection can uh, compo can be composed of multiple uh, features that are different types of features so for example a feature collection can compose of a circle a point a line and even a polygon but if you're using a thread file you can they must be the same type they cannot have different uh, geometries a uh, geometry type so if this polygon it must be all polygon you cannot mix a point with a polygon in the thread file okay so this is called a uh, feature collection and the other one here is uh, image collection. So image collection is a stack of images, right? It can be a time series. So they say one image. They say we have a lens set image, and uh, a lens set image can also have multi spectral bands, like right? B one, for example, B one to B seven. So an image can contain multiple bands, and an image collection is a series of images. Okay, so um, this these two basically. Uh, image and image collection feature and feature collection uh, they are very important and the other one is geometry so a feature uh, is a geometry with properties or a dictionary of uh, properties so they say a feature is a polygon within a thread file and that, and that polygon can have multiple attributes it can have an id it can have other attribute columns to indicate uh, the information about that uh, polygon so I'm going to show you some examples later, but these two are the fundamental data structures in Earth Engine. It's very important that you understand it here. If you scroll down the documentation, you will see multiple sections, right? So the one here is image, and the other one is image collection. Also, geometry, feature, and feature collection. So these are the three most important ones you want to be familiar with. Once you understand this, um, you basically you have a very good understanding about Google's Engine. And then later we can talk about reducer, basically how to reduce the information 
uh, you can do zonal statistics you can do all kinds of uh, reason reduction uh, to basically aggregate information uh, this is more like a little bit more advanced but uh, we will get into that later in this course so for now we're just going to focus on image and feature and uh, feature collection and there are some other types so for example dictionary list and array and date and number so these are something similar to um, data types in uh, other programming languages for example python or javascript um, this uh, they you can convert them um, but uh, we will talk about that uh, later so for now this uh, goes through here algorithms okay we will talk about later we will just uh, get into the get started so uh, first um, JavaScript uh, is one of the API provided by Earth Engine. It also has the other one, Python. So, uh, in the in the first few uh, videos, we are going to use JavaScript, but later we're going to switch to uh, Python and use the GMAP uh, package. And um, so, first, let's just try out some of the scripts in here. And one thing that you want to keep in mind is that uh, you want to be able to learn by yourself so once you introduce the basics um, later you can read the documentation and then you can copy paste so as long as you know how to get started then you can learn by yourself uh, the most important thing you are going to learn uh, in this course is to teach you how to learn by yourself um, um, you, you will have that capability you can learn pretty much anything so, and so first of all um, as I said you can copy or you can just type the script okay you can if you want you can just uh, copy the script come back to the uh, co-editor right click and then hit paste and then hit run if you see the yellow uh, color here it means something has been printed to the console so you want to switch this one they can see the results right and this is pretty uh, simple and straightforward uh, anything read by single quotes or double quotes is a string so this is a regular javascript a string that one is not actually earth engine okay but we can also um, print out some images so they say you want at least length set image everything in google's engine uh, all the image and image id is basically kind of a, hi a hierarchical structure so you have the one on the to uh, on, on top but you can have multiple subfolders Think about this like on your computer you have a, uh, a directory uh, storing all the data so within that directory you might have sub directories so for example lane set you can have lane set 5 you can lane set 7 lane set 8 and then different collection tier 1 then you have the unique id so if you don't know like where this come from uh, you can always go back to um, the help documentation uh, you can let me click here and you, you can look at the uh, get started uh, not, not the get started sorry uh, the data set so you can go to um you see where you can go to the data set page you can directly just go to the earth engine home page and then on left side here uh, you should be able to see the data sets okay and if you scroll down they say imagery lane set right you can click anyone and continue until you find the one that you need okay let's say service refractance tier one then you will see this one here image collection for example lane set lane set eight uh, collection 01 tier one service refractance so this is basically image collection is still a folder and then if you have another slash and then the name unique id of the image then it becomes an image so just think about the, the folder structure within your computer right you have folders 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 at the end you are going to have a file well within us the 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 uh, the folder the subfolder so and this is what it looks like in here right folder 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 and then file so this is the unique id you will you might be able to just i uh, guess uh, what this one it is so you'll be lane set five and this will be a uh, pass and roll uh 44 and 34 and 2014 uh, march 18 so this will be the date of the image all we need to do uh simple copy come back to here paste then hit one on the right here uh you're going to see the results so uh, if you see the icon here uh the arrow 
you can click and you're able to see the image right so let me scroll down here and so this is an image this is the unique id of that image and you can see the version you can see how many bands it uh it has b1 all the way to uh b10 11 and also the uh quality band you can also have the properties like what kind of information of this image contain this is the same as something uh, if you download this one from the internet for example the usgs uh, earth explorer uh, some of the landscape images um, there are tons of information uh, associated with the image so these are all the metadata right you can find out for example the cloud cover uh, what the cloud cover uh, like and also the data type uh, datum when it was acquired right 2014 march 18 and there might be some other information so we look into this uh, later but for now this is just showing you how do you print out the information so as you can see this is the image everything within google's engine uh if it is an image it it is going to be read by the unique id think about like this is the unique id to a specific image just the name for example um it's thinking about the social security uh, number of each individual person in the us right once you have that unique id then you can find out all kind of information about that person uh his name his age his uh address something like that so it's the same right this is the unique id of that image and i'm going to find out the information so you just need to just print up uh, the information and then keep in mind uh, for javascript here uh the semicolon this one is optional uh, but if you don't put the semicolon at the end uh, it's going to show you missing semicolon uh it doesn't uh, you can still run the script uh it still works but uh to make it clean and readable it's better to just put the semicolon at the end and then you can hit one you can see the result right so as simple as it is but most likely you won't be able to remember like exactly how do you find out this name right you, if you don't know that it exists um so we're going to show you later how you can filter the image but for now you just assume that you know the id you can print out the information next uh you can add the data to the map right so earlier i show you how to actually to print out the image you just print out the metadata but you don't actually see what the image look like so it's always very important that uh, you want to see what it looks like before you use the image for analysis so similarly uh, we can do this one here you can use um a define a variable and so this is in the programming uh, world you you always want to define a variable so once you have the variable then you can use this one later so basically you can reuse this one uh, just, just think about you have a name right and then it, this is a person and that person has a name so later you can refer, reference that person and to do something so again um let's just copy this one and then come back to here and let me you can delete it for the previous one and then just paste hit one voila you will see here um very simple it has been added to the map and for now you don't really see clearly what the image look like because by default it's going to load one bang one two three it doesn't uh, apply any contrast so that's why uh it looks pretty dark uh in here but if you come to here this is the image the same one we used earlier these two lines map dot center object and map dot add layer so center object means uh, this is the uh, image and i'm going to center my map around that image the second variable is um, zoom label so the larger the number uh the zoom the higher the zooming label the lower the number the, the more like zoom out and then you can add the layer to the map so if you don't know what kind of a uh, functions available for that specific uh, uh class you can do this so let me can come here uh to the end i can type map so the map in here reference to this one here so this is basically a built-in uh, map class or when, whenever you use the co-editor this one exists so you don't want to name a variable na name map okay so otherwise uh, you, you conflict with the, the built-in one um so you want to choose other uh, name don't use map okay so map top 
and then you can use control space once you uh, hit control space using your keyboard you will see in here at least this is called so-called auto completion uh, it's going to show you what kind of functions available for this specific uh, uh, object as you can see we have center object we can also have add layer so these all can be fine from here so for example add dot layer or center object right so if you type center object and then you can see the parameters the uh, the suggestions so we have multiple uh parameters that you can use uh, the first one is the object so the object it can be image it can be image collection it can be facial collection it can be a geometry so this one can be multiple type and the zoom level so you will see here zoom level from 1 to uh, 24 right if unspecified so that the last one uh, you can just ignore and similarly once you close uh, you can always control space uh, to bring uh, the documentation or you can hit tap or not tap just control space it will automatically fill, fill up this one if you don't know this uh, you can always back to here or you can hit shift tap no shift tap control space anyway i'm going to delete this one and come back to here uh, like i said um, this is what you can uh, quickly load an image to the map but uh, if you want to inspect the values this is where you can use the inspector so if you click the inspector and then click on the map you and then just let me maximize okay so once you click on the map you will see on the inspector tab here shows you the location so the point means uh, where you when your mouse click on the map what's the longitude and latitude also the zoom label right zoom label right now is eight if you zoom out uh, the zoom label is going to increase so if i click again the zoom label right now is nice so if you see your mouse you scroll you, sc you, you scroll your mouse one so right now it become 10 right next level it should be 11 so if i click again you expect to see this one 11 and this is the scale right so uh 76 meters per pixel Keep in mind, Google Earth Engine is so computationally efficient because it does not use the or the native resolution of the image to do the computation. It depends on the zoom level. So if I zoom out, uh, Google Earth Engine just use a kind of a very coarse resolution to do the computation, uh, and then return the result by aggregating the result from uh, thousands of uh, servers. So if you zoom out, I uh, zoom in, zoom in, uh, it 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 will just compute based on the screen of what image is showing here so that's why it's so fast it doesn't compute on the entire image um so just be aware you can also get all the pixel values i can continue to see if you have other data layers and uh, you should be able to also to see uh, the values for other data layers also the objects going here right now object is just one uh, image if we have polygon it's going also going to show you polygon Okay, so next I'm just going to here as you can see right now the color is not very good so we can actually add a visualization uh, to the image so again I can just copy come back to here select paste hit one okay so this time you see wow this is a very different results this is much much better so we can clearly see the differences between uh, the default settings and the one you can customize so all we need to do is just to ask uh, you need to tell google Engine what you want to do if you give correct instructions uh, if you're going to get fantastic uh, results so again this goes through the source code one more time um, uh, we uh, get the image and so this is the unique id and this is an image you need to basically convert the string to an image and then you define it as a variable anything in javascript if it is available you need to use the keyword var var to define the variable if you don't use this one uh it's going to uh throw an error right you want to show it in here uh, if you look at the console variable must be declared with var okay so again you can control g to go back okay so the first line is basically we define a variable uh from the earth engine data catalog so we retrieve that image and then we define a variable to specify how we want to visualize the data set 
and so by default it's going to use like b1 b2 b3 the first are three bands but in this example we're just going to use the first color composite so b5 b4 and b3 so this is called first color composite uh, using lens set you can also change the minimum and maximum values right so you can also change the gamma uh, uh, visualization parameters once you have this one you can pass into here so this line is still the same we center the object but when we add the layer we can um we can have if you hit control uh, uh, space it will show up the uh the, the suggestions and then show you what kind of a uh, parameter you can provide so in here you can layer five parameters you can provide the first one is still the image object so map dot add, add layer think about like arcgis arc map if you use that uh, you probably familiar with it you can click the plus icon to load data so this is the same right because first ending is not like a click uh and, and, and it's not like arc map you can just click on icon to load the data you need to write a uh, source code so this line add layer is to add the data from the earth engine data catalog or you can add something from your personal account and to add to the map if you want to show something on the map and the second one here is the visual visualization uh, parameters you tell us engine how you want to visualize and there are some parameters in here you can specify um so you can specify the uh what kind of bands if there's only one band you can also specify a palette and you can specify the minimum the maximum and the gamma the last one here is the layer name so the layer name is where it's going to show you later once you execute so let's execute one more time and you see this one here and if you click the layer so if you pay attention to here to the layer uh, uh group if i zoom in you will see it, you have you see a uh, like a uh, uh, progress bar from like a gray color but that means it's loading the data so once it's done uh the gray uh, uh, uh bar is uh, finished turned to uh white that means the data is fully loaded and you can turn on and off so this is where you can change uh, the symbology on the right here is a slider so this one shows you how you can uh, change the transparency of the data okay if you use any other gs software for example qgs or arcgs uh, it's the same right you can also change the transparency okay? you can also use this one here uh, click the icon this one show you that you can change the spectral band so this is b54 plus 3 I can change to maybe just four, uh, three, two, and then hit apply. You will see here right now it changed to natural color composite, right? Uh, RGB, and then hit close. You can also change the gamma, right? You can you can play around with these uh, parameters, but I'm just going to keep this one as it is, right? Apply, and you can also change the opacity, right? change to more transparent. Change to switch to right be close so a uh, very simple and straightforward to use um you need to do some coding but once you get used to it you can load any data set as you can see from this example we are loading a lens image you don't have to download anything from the website uh, you just need to find out the id so uh, this is very very useful uh, all you need to do like think about here if you need to do something you need to find out the right person to ask right if you know that person it, where to find they can provide help you go to that person and tell them okay help me do something and then they do it for you so this is exactly the same idea here using google's engine so you, you just need to find out the image id and then tell the give some instruction okay i want you to show me the image and i want you to use uh, like a post color composite i want you to show it as the layer name at least like and then just hit one Give the results and this is just one image it can load thousands of images uh, all at once uh, and the nice thing is that you don't need to download anything you just do everything just using the browser so um very very powerful but uh, i think that's all for this uh video but uh, later i'm going to show you more um going through the uh, tutorials but for now uh, just for you to get started uh, how to load a simple image using google changing okay uh that's all for this video i will see you in the next one take care